This is a brief history of the influence of Menno Simons on uh, Amish and Mennonite history. Menno Simons lived from 1496 to 1561. He was one of the most noted early Anabaptist leaders in the 16th century. Because of Menno Simons' leadership, his followers became known as Mennonite, which I learned later that he totally resisted. He didn't want that to happen. Menno was born in Wittmarsum, a small village in Friesland in the Netherlands. He was trained as a Catholic priest and ordained at age 28. He self-admitted that his first couple of years of serving as a priest were fairly secularly oriented. He spent a lot of time playing cards and drinking and in various diversions. Over time, Menno became troubled by several Roman Catholic doctrines. After serving several years as a priest, he noticed that the scripture never supported the idea that was widespread at that time, that of infant baptism. He began reading the writings of reformers Martin Luther and others. While they defended infant baptism, he parted ways with them because he couldn't find scripture to support that. Menno was soon promoted to become the priest of his hometown in Wittmarsum, Netherlands. And it was from this position as the hometown priest that he later earned a reputation as a very effective Anabaptist preacher and leader. He broke with the Roman Church in 1536, expressing a new commitment to the cause of Jesus Christ. He joined the peaceful Anabaptist reformers with whom he then served for 25 years until his peaceful death in 1561. Following Menno's joining the peaceful Anabaptist group, he spent much of his time speaking to church leaders throughout the area. Because the Anabaptists were threatened by authorities, much of this had to be done in secret, and Menno moved frequently. He was noted for his evangelistic, evangelistic work, his writing and teaching on Christian doctrine, his organizing and providing stability for the church through this effective leadership. Menno wrote on the pain of needing to be separated from his wife and children over such long periods of time because of his preaching and teaching demands. Much of this was because he had to do this during, in secret and travel at night so that the authorities wouldn't find him. He lived with a price on his head, and it was told that Menno especially felt pain over the awareness that others actually lost their lives as martyrs because they had given him shelter. One story is told that Menno, who is being sought by the area authorities, was traveling from one community to another on top of a stagecoach with a driver of the stagecoach, and the stagecoach was filled with other people. The local authorities stopped the stagecoach, and when the driver asked what they were looking for, they said, we're looking for Menno Simons. The story said that Menno leaned down into the stagecoach, looked the people in the eye in there and said, is Menno Simons in here? Of course, the reply was no, he's not in here. Not knowing what Menno looked like, the authorities let the stagecoach move on with Menno and the rest of the travelers safe and unharmed. Menno's basic theological belief was that in Christ we are made new creatures. He held up the supreme authority of Jesus as the divine revelation in the New Testament and the authoritative key through which to interpret all scripture. Menno's strong emphasis on non-resistance or pacifism, on the nature of the church as a disciplined community, and on evangelism was based on his understanding of the new life which the Spirit of Christ creates in believers. An often favored Menno Simons quote illustrates his understanding of the Jesus-centered faith that he taught. And I quote, 
True evangelical faith cannot lie dormant. It clothes the naked, it feeds the hungry, it confronts the sorrowful, it shelters the destitute, it serves though that those that harm it, it binds up that which is wounded, it has become all things to all people." End quote. 